The Lord is with us. Welcome, friends and members of Christ Waterloo. It's really wonderful that you have dropped by for these next couple of minutes as we pray together, as we um, listen to Scripture together, and as we sing together. We hope this time will be a blessing for us. And as we remember that, that, that the Lord is with us. We begin uh, at the baptismal font where we are reminded of the, the fact that we are made new in Christ. Every day we are born anew in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for water everywhere, for the Grand River, its many tributaries, and for the great lakes which surround us. Bathe us in your forgiveness, in your grace, and in your love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Invited to join and sing along with us number 390, The Risen Christ. Reveals himself despite their lingering. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we receive the legacy of a living hope, born again not only from his death, but also from his resurrection. May we, who have received forgiveness of sins through the Holy Spirit, live to set others free until at length we enter the inheritance that is imperishable and unfading, where Christ lives and reigns with you and the same Spirit. Amen. his voice and address the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonder, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced, Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that, all of us are witnesses. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Our responsive reading is from Psalm 16. It will be read responsively by whole verse. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord my good above all other. All oh, my, my delight, delight is in the godly, godly that, that are in the land, land upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. 
It is you who uphold my lot. My, my boundaries, boundaries enclose a pleasant land. land. Indeed, Indeed, I have, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set, set the Lord always before me, because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices, my body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. A reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand and his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them, although the doors were shut. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here in my, and see in my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. 
But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The disciples are a mess. And no wonder they've locked themselves up in a little room somewhere among the many crammed together buildings and houses and winding narrow streets in Jerusalem those days following the momentous events of Jesus' death and now rumors of his resurrection. Locked away, hiding alone by themselves with their many complicated feelings about what just happened to Jesus and their own part that they played in these tragic events. For one thing, they must have felt like failures, that they let Jesus down, that they couldn't protect him. And they didn't even have the decency to try their best to stick close to Jesus through his trial and his torture and his crucifixion. Only Peter, it seems, managed to get close enough to Jesus, just to the outer courtyard of Pilate's praetorium but even there Peter ended up denying knowing Jesus three times when pressed by a questioner all of them in one way or the other ended up abandoning Jesus running off scared and now now they're feeling awful about that now they're feeling bad about it guilty and ashamed nothing they want to do more than just curl up in a corner and hide away somewhere these disciples are also deeply afraid. They are afraid. Fear is a powerful emotion, a powerful motivator of behavior. I don't know about you, but um, I've never been to the point of fearing for my life. Yeah, I've been scared before, but never afraid for my own life. And yet, this is a fear that these disciples are experiencing and a fear experienced by millions around the world today. Over the past years and decades, we've witnessed millions of people from places like Syria and Sudan and Myanmar, the, the Ro Rohingya refugees fleeing their war-torn uh, homelands to seek safer pastures and doing so because they're afraid for their lives, afraid for the well-being of their, themselves, their body, their family, their children, whether because of tribal or factional violence arising from deep-seated prejudice and bias and hatred, whether because of being in the wrong place at the wrong time, collateral damage, innocent yet deadly casualties of a larger conflict between two superpowers or rivaling military and political superpowers. That basic survival instinct kicks in when your life is threatened and you will do anything to survive even if it means doing the difficult thing and leaving one's own homeland which one might feel very affectionate or connected to, towards. Two people that I know quite personally have experienced that fear for one's life. My mom and my dad. They have a remarkable story of migration from Poland to the UK to Canada back in the 60s. Back then in the mid-1960s after having served a two-year appointment as clergy at a Polish Lutheran church in London, England, they made the difficult decision not to return to their homeland, Poland. You might have you wonder why. I, mean, I asked the question when I was a teenager, Mom, Dad, why didn't you return to Poland, your homeland, after being away for two years in London, England? Why? Because of fear. You see, before journeying, before heading to London, England from Poland, my mom and dad had been asked by the Polish communist authorities to spy for the Polish government while in London, England. 
we're getting into some real intrigue here. But my mom and my dad absolutely categorically refused to be spies. They defied the political Polish communist authorities. They said no to becoming spies. And so now they were afraid, afraid that if they returned to Poland after defying the Polish government, they could suffer retribution, reprisal, punishment in some way, arrest, or even worse, death, imprisonment, being made to disappear as political dissidents, so to speak. They were afraid, legitimately fearful for their well-being and their lives. A main reason for their arrival to Canada in 1967. They were, in a, in a sense, political refugees. The disciples as well were following their survival instincts, fearing the Roman authorities, who, who they were afraid would hunt them down and crucify them, just like they crucified Jesus, their leader. And so they were afraid. They are afraid of the Roman authorities, who they thought would be wanting to rid Jerusalem of the last of the troublemakers of the followers of Jesus. That's what totalitarian regimes do, get rid of the opposition. The disciples knew who they were dealing with, the mighty Caesar Augustus, the mighty and powerful Pontius Pilate. They knew who they were up against, and so they just hold themselves up and they hid, locked behind closed doors. And now with all these emotions roiling within them, fear, failure, shame, guilt, grief, they must have been a, just a total mess. I can imagine that. Close to tears, all of them in that locked away room in Jerusalem. Their eyes literally must have been perpetually wet, moistened with tears of grief and fear and sadness and frustration. I don't know about you, but during these days of self-isolation and distancing, I find myself close to tears almost all the time. You know, when I think of the deep grief of those who've just lost an elder parent in a coronavirus-infected long-term care residence, or when I consider the heroic and big-hearted efforts of frontline doctors and nurses caring for, for the ill and doing battle against COVID-19, or when on Zoom or Skype or FaceTime I see a face of someone I haven't seen already for over a month whom I re realize I really miss them already. There's the lump in the throat again. The tears just welling up. There is so much just under the surface these days. And I notice this in others as well. The, the moistened eyes, the tears. We're all experiencing this well of emotions just under the surface. Well, then suddenly we have this startling statement in the Gospel of John that Jesus came and stood among them, blessing them with peace. Imagine that, right into the midst of that mess, right in the midst of that locked room full of teary-eyed disciples trying to come to grips with their turbulent emotions. Right into that mess, Jesus steps in, offering his peace and his forgiveness. The text simply says the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Now their tears are tears of joy, of relief, of, of healing, of restored relationship with Jesus, with themselves, with the world, with life itself. How sweet those tears of joy must have been to know finally, deep down, that no matter the mistakes of the past, no matter them abandoning Jesus, no matter each other's wounds and hurts and shortcomings, Jesus steps right into the thick of it, embracing them nevertheless with boundless forgiving love, deep personal encouragement, and newfound confidence and courage to step out, out of that locked room, into a new world, into a new day. 
When they see Jesus step into their midst, not with flaming sword or vengeful words or I told you so or punishing rage for all their missteps, personal betrayals and cowardly behaviors, but rather with gentle love, with forgiving mercy and joy simply for being able to see each other's faces once again, to see them face to face again, simple joy for that alone the disciples' hearts must have melted. May our hearts melt as well. May this joy, the joy of God in the risen Christ, stepping right into our messes, may that be our joy. Amen. sing, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart number 800. Let us pray. We gather our prayers together, both in the words I speak this morning and the words whispered silently in our hearts. We lift them up to God who hears them. We pray 
with the response, Lord, in your mercy, and you respond, hear our prayer. We pray for the church universal. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit that we may honor and pass on the great inheritance that we have received. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the earth, that we may touch her wounds with healing care and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole world, its nations, its leaders, and its people, that your wisdom and your peace may prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in need, the suffering, the oppressed, the ill, the dying, and all those who love and care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, O God, who through Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, and in the community of the Holy Spirit, gives us an inheritance that is imperishable and unfading, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples in whichever language or version you prefer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing, Be Not Afraid, number 388. Thank you for joining us again. We look forward to seeing you again in two weeks. Next week on April the 26th, uh, we have a special congregational activity that we will be involved in that morning. So there will be no uh, public worship videotape for you. We will again join you the following Sunday on May the 3rd. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.